Welcome to the Disney Summit. We're here today with Dr. Nick of the Neurologic Wellness Institute in downtown Chicago, Illinois. Today, Dr. Nick is going to talk to us about vestibular migraine. Thanks for coming today, Dr. Nick. Thanks for having me. So I'm looking forward to this because vestibular migraine is being diagnosed more and more, and I'm not sure how much people know about vestibular migraine, so I appreciate you taking the moment to discuss vestibular migraine with us. Yeah, of course. Vestibular migraine is the most common cause of dizziness coming from the, the brain, so actually within the central nervous system. So, so vestibular migraine basically is the most common cause of dizziness coming from the brain, so actually the central nervous system. One in seven Americans have migraines, um, but that doesn't mean that every single person with a migraine has vestibular complaints or dizziness or vertigo. But a lot of them do. And 41% of patients just going to balance centers, whether they have problems with balance, they have incoordination, they have, um, generally have vestibular migraine. And so the most common symptoms are classic migraine symptoms, which are all down here in the bottom. Uh, but then you need to have vertigo or dizziness as well. So migraine symptoms could be sensitivity to light or photophobia. Uh, sensitivity to sound, phonophobia, nausea, headache. Headache can be both sides, but classically it's unilateral, just on one side. Um, and it generally is going to come from the back of the neck and then kind of shoot around to the eye. But I've also seen a lot of people with migraines, vestibular migraines, that have it behind both eyes, so are ocular migraines. Tinnitus, ringing in the ears visual aura. So a lot of times there's like some vision loss some zigzags or dots in one field of vision. And then nystagmus is just a type of eye movement. That abnormal eye movement is just something where the eyes kind of move side to side um, or up and down or clockwise. And um, that is going to affect the patient's ability to feel where they are in space. And that leads to the main symptoms of vestibular migraine like dizziness, or vertigo. What are the differences of these? Vertigo is generally means there's some kind of rotation. On the other hand, dizziness is not necessarily normally like spinning. It can be, but most times dizziness is like unsteadiness or lightheadedness, um, or just people could be complaining of balance problems. They just don't feel right. Because it is such a popular diagnosed condition, then there has to be really stringent criteria. And so really it's basically anybody that has had a migraine or migraine-like features, um, current or past history, which is in these scenarios, so a headache, photophobia, phonophobia, visual aura, just we talked about, but they have to have vestibular symptoms um, that can last either five minutes or it can last really long, up to a couple days. Most commonly, triggers of vestibular migraine are going to be stress, diet, or specifically a light or a sound. Diet could be anything from sugar to food sensitivities um, to nitrates that are kind of in like packaged bacon or processed meats. And that a lot of times can trigger um, what happens functionally with the migraine. Classically, a lot of people think the dizziness always comes from the inner ear. The inner ear contains uh, this cochlea, which is for hearing, and then it contains everything over here to the left, the otoliths right here that are more for like gravitational sense. And then these semicircular canals, which are more for this rotation or spinning type of, um, of sense. We want to look a little bit deeper. And so that's where we look at areas within the brain. We'll look at the photo on the left first. Vestibular migraine affects the brainstem here, which deals with a lot of autonomic functions like breath rate, heart rate, um, control of postural tone. And then the cerebellum, which is the little brain right behind it. And so the cerebellum is coordinating this brainstem. So if we think about a migraine, a migraine is going to have problems with the blood vessel tone. And so what happens is blood vessels will constrict and there'll be a lack of blood flow to the brain. And then there'll be this compensatory reaction or um, expansion of blood vessels. And that's what causes the pulsatile-like headache or migraine.
meaning that, that the person experiences. Um, along with problems with sensitivity to light and sound coming from this area of the brainstem, problems with dizziness, vertigo, uh, spinning coming from areas of the brain uh, or the brainstem down lower. The cerebellum, like I said, is kind of helping to control these areas. So a lot of times dysfunction in the cerebellum can lead to then dysfunction in the brainstem leading to these symptoms. The cerebellum is at the key of vestibular migraine and the paper is from 2019, so relatively new. Um, it's called self-motion perception is sensitized in vestibular migraine uh, leading to pathologic, pathophysiological and clinical applications. Basically, vestibular symptoms in vestibular migraine come from the vestibular nuclei which are sensitized by migraine-related brainstem structures um, and su simultaneously suppressed by inhibitory feedback from the cerebellum, um, which is the site of this integration of these two structures. And so what we do, or classically what's seen in um, vestibular rehab treatment, is going to be, um, is going to be this. So um, this paper showed that vestibular migraine patients have done very well with general vestibular rehab treatment, which includes gaze stability exercises, basically where the patient looks at the dot right here and turns their head left and right or up and down for 60 to 90 seconds. Um, and this improves maybe that nystagmus that somebody might have. Um, habituation exercises. So these are more things that are gonna compensate for symptoms, but it may not actually fix the true problem uh, exercises to enhance gait and balance. So that's just walking and balance exercises and then walking to improve endurance. This is what has been shown to be beneficial for these patients. Um, at the same time, a lot of people will take migraine medications, um, maybe like a sumatriptan or rizotriptan that will take away the migraine when they get it. But again, those aren't necessarily fixing the problem. They're more emergency medicines. Um, and this paper also said that specific treatment for each patient has the best results. And so you can't just do all of these and just expect someone to get better. So what we do at the Neurologic Wellness Institute is we're always gonna have a unique treatment plan. Um, we do extensive testing based on balance, based on vestibular nystagmography or a VNG, which we're looking at your eyes. Um, we also do um, basically pulse blood pressure testing, so orthostatic tolerance. We're looking at your pulse and blood pressure when you're sitting, when you're laying down, when you're standing. Um, and then we develop a treatment plan specifically for that. We do a very unique, specific approach to each patient. Um, and all vestibular migraines are a little bit different. So it's important for us to identify what problems are there objectively and then work on those so that we can then improve your subjective. Thank <laughs> you.